Hello everyone, you're welcome to part B of the first series of sex and pregnancy. I couldn't finish all that I had at that, that, that video, so I'm going to complete it up today. I said we're going to be talking about breast care in pregnancy and we're going to be talking about why do I have mood swings? That's very important. Why do I have be, why do I become happy in the morning and at night I am already cranky and I don't want to see anyone. So we're going to be talking about all that in today's episode. I'm going to give you an addition, self-medication in pregnancy. So it's going to be a full loaded pack in this episode. Now, my name is Nos Abiodo, Nos Abi for short. I'm a nurse, I'm a midwife, I'm a public health advocate, and I have eight years experience. I talk about nursing, I talk about lifestyle, and everything in between. So we're going to be talking about this antenatal and motherhood series because it's a passion for me to bridge the knowledge gap um, of intending mothers and expectant mothers about um, antenatal care, intranatal care, and postnatal care. So we're going to be running this series for six months. So do make sure that you stay tuned. Thank you so much for my subscribers for always supporting this channel. Thank you so much for always returning, coming back. And then for my new, new, new invitees. Thank you so much for coming, seeing my face for the first time. I welcome you. Please gonna do four things for me. You're gonna like this channel, please. You're gonna subscribe, please comment and share to your friends. Your pregnant friends and your intending pregnant friends, your single friends, let them learn because knowledge is power. So today, I'm going to be starting from breast care in pregnancy. Now, some people would wonder, what do I need to care? Why do I need to care for my breast in pregnancy? At least I still, I just need to, I need to use it when I have already delivered of my baby, isn't it? But breast care should start right from the time you realize or notice that you're pregnant. Because it's a bit difficult when it gets to that stage when you actually need it and you now start you now start caring for it. So what's wrong with my breast? Why do I need to care for it? Now remember that before your pre your conception, your breast is more like your cosmetic or womanhood feature. But by the time you deliver your baby, it becomes a motherhood and nurturing feature. What I mean is that. Well, before you're pregnant, you're pregnant, your breast is just a way of your femininity, making people know that, yes, I'm a woman, you feel beautiful, you feel lovely, you feel fine. Now, by the time you're, you're delivered of your baby, your breast now becomes a form of nutrition for that baby. Your breast becomes the form of food, your, the form of, 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 of water for that baby to grow and nurture. So it is very important that as the baby comes out from your womb, the baby has to get another form of nutrition and that's your breast milk and it doesn't matter either your breast is big or your breast is small as long as your mother your breast will definitely bring out milk for the nutrition of your baby so what do we do to care for this breast while we're pregnant so that we can ensure that we have a seamless period after delivery now remember that your breast is like a big balloon okay on either side of your chest, at the front side of your chest, and it has a, a round um, a circle at the middle, which is pigmented. We call it pigmented. That means it has a different um, shape than your other part of your breast. That's the pigmentation. And it has a point in the middle. That's how a regular and normal breast should be. Now, if at any point that you notice that the point in the middle is either not pointed as a shield, or retract that means it goes back and it's like too flat then there could be a problem when it's time to give your child nutrients through breast milk so what do we do and how can we make sure that this problem does not occur when we deliver now while you take your bath normal bath you have soap you can put in between the part of your fingers these two parts and then you can use it to rub your nipple that's the upper part that's the protruded area i'm talking about now you rub it and then you try to bring it out you rub it and then you try to bring it out. This helps you. It helps to prepare your breast for um, breast feeding later when you deliver your baby. So you just put a soap, just a little soap in your hand and then lather it. And then you try to rub in between your, your, your nipple in between the fingers and try to pull it out gently. You try to pull it out gently. It will help for the nipple to be prominent because that prominence of your nipple is needed for your baby to open his or her mouth and latch upon so that he or she can get enough nutrition from your breast. 
okay now there's another way that you can also do it some people would say that you can start using maternity bra even before delivery now you know how a maternity bra is a maternity bra is a, a strict big strapped bra and it is worn and then you can have an opening at the side of the 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 the, the um, um, armpit area of the of the bra that you can open and then the mouth of your nipple the nipple area of your mouth, areola and the nipple area of your mouth protrudes out. So this gives a kind of pressure on that area so that it can be protruded or it can be prominent before delivery. So you can put that on maybe two or three times in a week, maybe just one hour or two hours. And if you feel comfortable, you can even use it before delivery. Okay, so it is very, very good to help your nipple to protrude out. Now, there's another third way that we can do that. It's you can help, you can ask your partner to help you pull it out through his mouth by sucking it out that's a, also a very good way it's a romantic way it's a nice way it's like a type, form of foreplay but it is also helping us to ensure that we have effective breastfeeding after birth okay now don't don't don't, don't play the scent don't play the scent it's also very nice for our partners to be involved in the care and the 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 the, the, the nutrition of our babies it's a good sense of fulfillment and i know our men will also love to assist us at this point okay so these three ways are known to help with trying to encourage the mother to you know breastfeed well after delivery then don't forget that you have to take a lot of water you have to take Things that contain lots of water because 90% of breast milk is water. So you have to take a lot of water to ensure that your breast is full and well ready for giving your child enough nutrition after delivery. That's also very important. Now, um, some people would ask me, when do I start breastfeeding? Now, researchers have shown and health professionals advise that half hour after breast, you start to put your baby to breast. Okay, put your baby to breast and encourage your baby to breastfeed. Now, some people would say, sometimes I put my baby to breast, he's not interested at that time, I'm feeling so weak and tired. Just try, because it also helps for uterus to contract and helps to reduce bleeding. So, half hour after birth, if you're able, if you're strong enough, you can start breastfeeding. You don't expect your child to just grab the nipple and start sucking at once. And you don't expect your nipple to just pull out, uh, your, your nipple, to, your breast milk to just pump out at once like that. It requires time and patience. But you have to ensure that you keep on putting your baby to breast so that your baby can latch onto it maybe the baby can start um, licking the breast after a while the baby will start sucking gradually but ensure this that the mouth of your breast is always open enough that is protruded enough for the mouth of the baby to latch well so instead of sucking directly on your breast, the baby is sucking for the, the bigger part, that part that I said is pigmented called the areola. This helps a lot to encourage bonding and establish good breastfeeding skills. Okay, now I want to talk about um, self-medication in pregnancy. Now it is important that you don't self-medicate in pregnancy, especially at the first three months of pregnancy. Because those periods are the periods that your baby actually forms. The bones, the brain, the heart, the lungs, the liver of the baby forms at that moment. So any drug that is teratogenic, they call it teratogenic because it affects the, the fetus adversely. So any drug teratogenic is a no-no at that moment. Please ensure that you don't self-medicate during pregnancy okay just try as much as possible to consult with your healthcare professional for any information or any drug as long as it is prescribed by the doctor then they know that you're pregnant they will give you the drug and now the last thing i'm going to talk about on this episode before i draw the curtain is why do i have mood swings in pregnancy now it's I told you in my previous video about the presence of some hormones in your body system and the level of such hormones rise when you're pregnant. So those are the hormones that cause these mood swings. They're actually called relaxation hormones, but they do affect your mood, your thinking, your emotions, your you know ability to decipher and some other things. So those hormones just make you feel have mood swings that means you're happy in the morning in the afternoon you're sad you're you know glad in the evening midnight you're you're not you're not so happy now how do we deal with that now we just have to understand ourselves we need to understand that we we have some peculiar um, um differences okay there are some people throughout their pregnancy they don't have mood swings lucky for them for the but for those who 
path. It's important that all the members of your family or those living around you, those living with you, they understand who you are and they try not to get on your nerves when you're having those cranky days. You understand what I mean? So that you don't get too angry or you don't misbehave. So that's very important. So I hope I've been able to give you a few tidbits about why uh, with breast care in pregnancy, um, self-medication, um, and mood swings in pregnancy. So till I see you in my next episode of At Natal and Motherhood series, at Nothing with Abby, I say stay safe, stay healthy, be, be happy. Bye for now. <music>